Rolling right along here on the Exam Room Podcast, brought to you by the Physicians Committee with the weight loss champion, Chuck Carroll. Thanks so much for being here as we continue to take a look at breast cancer all month long, part of our big Let's Beat Breast Cancer campaign. And as I said at the top of the show, this particular episode devoted to shattering soy myths. And there Love is it. no better myth buster that I know than the woman sitting across the table from me. She is beloved around here. She is oh so smart. She is known as the fiber queen. She has a, a crown and a scepter. She's just amazing. We welcome <laughs> Wow. Dietitian Lee Crosby back to the show. What's up, Lee? Not too much, Chuck. It's kind of, I feel I feel a little humbled by that introduction. It's been too long. I'm like, who are you talking about? We have had <laughs> listeners write in and be like, where's Lee? You know, you've seen that. Upstairs, toiling away. I know. You are very busy up at the Barnard Medical Center. <laughs> but we have this great campaign now, so totally worth it. I know. This is this is exciting. This is our fourth episode. Um, Fantastic. And soy is such a, a big one for uh, women and breast cancer because there is this, this myth out there that if you eat soy, you're going to get breast cancer. It's I almost like a it. foregone conclusion. Where does this idea stem from? Well, I, I understand a little bit how intuitively someone might think, okay, well, but here's the thing. So soy contains these substances called isoflavones, mm -hmm. and these have also been called phytoestrogens, and they do have some mild estrogenic effects. And so it's reasonable to think, well, gosh, if – estrogen, having high estrogen levels can fuel breast cancer growth, then I sure don't want to eat something that might contain something that could act like an estrogen. Right. So I think that's where this myth has sort of gotten some legs. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, actually, if you want to reduce your risk, the opposite is actually true. So we have excellent data suggesting that women who eat more soy, and we're talking whole soy foods here, not like isolated supplements. Okay. Um, women who eat more soy have a lower risk of getting breast cancer and a lower risk of recurrence. That's good. To know. Okay. So you've mentioned supplements. Um, what happens if you get it through supplements? Does that you don't get that risk or does it become dangerous at that point? Yeah. So every time sort of my general rule and there are times when, for example, taking a B12 supplement important if you're on a plant based diet. For sure. But in general, if you're trying to short circuit the system to get some kind of advantage by concentrating something down into a supplement, I feel like that often backfires. And I feel like that's what's going on here as well. So soy isoflavone supplements, there actually is a little bit of data linked linking intake of those supplements in women who have a family history or personal history of breast cancer with increased risk of recurrence. But again, you've taken something that is at a lower level in a whole soy food and concentrated into effectively a pharmacological dose. And it's the same thing in terms of vitamin A. It actually, when you're eating it in vitamin A rich foods, so things like you know carrots and sweet potatoes, it's actually linked to a lower risk of lung cancer. But if you take it as an isolated supplement, it increases the risk of lung cancer. So we see this throughout the epidemiological literature. And I think this is probably an example of that. All right. So all of this ties back to estrogen. Correct. Why don't we then define what estrogen is in case somebody's curious. All right. That is an excellent point. So estrogen is a female hormone. It's made by women, unsurprisingly, but perhaps surprisingly, it's also made by men to a much smaller extent. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. And there are actually a couple of, well, multiple different forms, but there's estradiol, which is more common in premenopausal women and estrone in postmenopausal women. Two types there, but as I understand, there are also two types of estrogen receptors, right? There are, All and they right. have very different impacts in terms of what happens when estrogen binds to them. So estrogen receptors are like little docks that sit on the surface of cells, like breast cells, for instance, and the two different kinds, estrogen binds to them, but there are alpha receptors and beta receptors, and there are very different effects depending on which kind of receptor is bound. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Alpha and beta. Interesting. Uh, isoflavones. We mentioned that word kind yeah. of at the top as well. Right. How do they help? Okay. So one thing I forgot to mention, those alpha estrogen receptors, yeah. those are kind of troublemakers. They have a tendency when estrogen binds to them to promote the growth of breast cancer cells, for instance, whereas those beta receptors, I like to think of them as sort of the peacemakers, they actually mm -hmm. dial down cell growth. So how do isoflavones tie in? Isoflavones actually preferentially bind, to, well, you guess, what kind of receptor do you think they bind to? 
uh, the troublemaker ones? The, no, the peacemakers. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think he maybe wasn't listening to me. I mean, I listened intently. <laughs> sure, you I'm were. just thinking a couple steps mm-hmm. ahead. And all of, you're making you're me just, look you're bad just, here, You're Crosby. just testing me. I understand I, how it is. All right. So, yeah, that's right. The beta <laughs> receptors. Now, are you testing me? All right. So they bind to the beta receptors preferentially, and that actually helps decrease cell growth. It gives these sort of slow down stop signals as opposed to the alpha receptor, which is more favored by a woman's own natural estrogen. Mm. Yeah. And that alpha receptor is the one that gives us kind of like grow, baby, grow signals. Right. So and that's what. Yeah. So yeah. that's exactly why when you're eating so whole soy foods and getting these, you know, healthy doses of isoflavones that they could actually help reduce the risk of getting breast cancer. So what data do we have here that supports the idea that soy foods actually lower? I mean, we're talking specifically about data here, lowers the risk not raises it of breast cancer. Yeah, and I'm all about the data because honestly, don't tell coming into this, I actually kind of used to think before I learned about plant-based nutrition that soy was iffy for women with breast cancer too yeah. or who are at risk for it. And now I think the opposite. So we have a ever-growing body of research showing that women who consume more soy are less likely to get breast cancer. So one study example found that women averaging a cup of soy milk or about half a cup of tofu daily have a 30% lower risk of developing breast cancer compared to women who don't eat very much soy at all. Wow. And then a 2013 paper, and this is I like this because they looked at 22 different studies and they used a technique called meta-analysis. I love that word. That translates to big analysis. Yeah. <laughs> What they found was, and these are among these are among Asian women, um, because they're the ones consuming more soy. Right. They found that those who consume the most isoflavones had a 32 percent lower risk of breast cancer, and that was for both pre and postmenopausal cancers. A 2014 meta analysis reached similar conclusions. It should be noted that these women are getting their isoflavones predominantly from whole soy foods. Mm. Yeah, keeps mm. coming back to that, doesn't it? It does. A- and this data, I mean. It goes back, one of the studies you referenced here was from 2008, but this data goes back even further than that. Um, yeah, yeah, this is not, it's not news. Right, and and yet there's still this pervasive myth out there, as we said at the top of the show, that soy is really, really bad, especially if you've been diagnosed with breast cancer, you got a family history of it, like just avoid it at all costs. Right. And doctors are, are telling their patients that. Wow. Yeah. And so it's also, here's the other piece. We're always focusing on the isoflavones, but it's also about what soy is displacing in the diet. So if someone's eating tofu, they're probably not eating a hamburger. Ah. So there's that piece as well. Good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good point. Yep. So talking about their veggie burgers probably, right? So if you're eating a veggie burger, you're not going yep. to the drive through right? <laughs> Pretty much. I got you. Yep. That's, all right. So that's, that's a really good point. Um, and there are even more studies on that. I can give you a little bit more data. Can I just do like one more? Dive in, man. This is me. Come on. All right. Women's Healthy Eating and Living Study showed that soy can help protect breast cancer survivors again. They found that women eating the most soy cut the risk of cancer coming back or cancer death by about half. Recurrence. Yeah. So that's a pretty decent reason. And then well, last one, study of over 5,000 women who had been diagnosed with breast cancer for about four years. And they found that women who regularly ate soy products, and these are things like soy milk, tofu, or edamame, these are those whole soy foods, had a, were about a third less likely to have their cancer come back and 29% less likely to die from their cancer. Wow. So soy is actually something that unless there's something else going on that someone's physician is like, you know what, mm, you need to stay away from this, or if they have an allergy, if, if there's not some other you know, specific reason not to eat it, I think it's actually advantageous for women who've had a diagnosis to eat soy. Wow. I want to ask you a little bit about bone health and breast cancer survivors. Um, there's some concern among men, obviously, you know, uh, less prevalent among men, breast cancer is, but sure. some concern that eating soy isn't healthy because it causes the release of female hormones or even lowers lowers testosterone level. Uh, what's, what's where do point? I even start with this? I don't know. Start from the top. You tell I mean, me. no. Does eating soy make you release estrogen? No. There's n- there are no documented adverse effects on men at the levels that people are eating soy. Uh, meta-analysis showed that neither soy products nor the supplements, which again, we're not recommending here, but neither of those affect testosterone levels in men. And I just want to say that Okay, I hear a lot about, well, there's phytoestrogens in soy. And okay, again, and we're going to talk about how those actually are advantageous to men too. But the same guys who are talking to me about 
oh gosh, soy has a phytoestrogen in it. I'm not going to eat it. Well, actually, they don't talk to me that much about it, but I sure hear about it. They know where <laughs> I stand on that. But they are the same people who will go out there and eat their cheeseburger and eat their pizza covered in cheese, which has loads of honest to goodness actual mammalian estrogen in it what? so they'll eat i mean cheese is a concentrated source of estrogens i know i know we actually just have put out a complaint about this yes indeed so but those same guys were like oh i can't eat soy it's got you know there could be a phytoestrogen in it we'll then go and eat a big old wad of stuff that definitely has real female hormones in it what Where's the logic? Well, this is, well, that's the major disconnect. I mean, that's why we filed that petition with the FDA, you know, to kind of I'll put it in sports terms. Coach people, <laughs> educate them. You yeah, know? I just had to have a little rant on that because it makes me crazy every time I hear I can't eat soy because it's going to, you know, make me grow boobs. All these things. You, 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 you people actually believe this stuff. I know. And it concerns me because even for men's health, and we're going to get into that, it can be protective. Mm. This isn't just a, for the ladies, although it's great. In this case, what's good for the goose, good for the gander. Let's put a capper on uh, soy and bone health uh, among breast cancer survivors. Sure, yeah. Uh, Good there for bone health as well? Yeah, actually. So this is cool. It's a pretty fresh study. So June of this year, uh, the Journal of the National Cancer Institute published this. It's from the Shanghai Breast Cancer Survival Study. They looked at more than 4,000 women with breast cancer. And what they found was that higher soy intake was associated with a 77% reduced risk of osteoporotic fractures in younger women. So Mm. that's pretty nice. Again, it's acting as an estrogen receptor modulator, they think, these isoflavones, to actually help protect bone. This is for the gentleman out there, like I promised I was going to talk about this. So there is another analysis, more than 14 studies, showing that consuming more soy linked to a 26% lower risk of prostate cancer. And I got real curious about, like, why that might be. And here's another fun fact. Mm. The epithelium cells in the prostate actually express the estrogen receptor beta. Whoa. What? And so when you have these isoflavones go in and bind that ER beta, it actually slows the growth or it gives slowing signals in terms of cell growth to prostate cells. Fun. Did you know that? I did not. There you go. Look at you drop it a little knowledge. nugget. Okay. I know, man. Had to You're do that. So, smart. so again, men are also protected when they eat this. I know. That's a lot. It's pretty great, right? Okay. Now let's talk about soy and fertility. All right. uh, does it affect fertility? Because I think that, again, that perception may be up there among, you know, men who haven't been coached up uh, <laughs> that if I eat soy, well, that's got estrogen in it. It's going to lower my testosterone levels. I'm not going to be as fertile, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no one's saying I'm going to eat cheese that has actual estrogen in it. That's going to lower my testosterone levels. But no, 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 truly, studies in both men and women have shown no effect of soy on fertility. Um, In fact, a lot of people worry about feeding their infants a soy formula versus a cow's milk formula. And there's no difference in reproductive health as adults in infants who are fed soy versus a dairy formula. Uh, what else haven't we touched on that you think is important here? Is there anything that we've left off? I feel like we've covered most of it. A couple of things, again, I want to emphasize when I'm talking about, hey, let's eat more soy. I don't mean let's eat more processed soy stuff. I mean, let's eat more those whole soy foods. So things that are made from the whole bean without doing you know a lot of isolates or that kind of thing. So we're talking edamame, soy milk, tofu, tempeh. That's step one. And then the second piece here, because I get this question a lot, I wanted to address it, and that is GMO and organic soy. Ah, here we go. Because everyone's asking about it. So uh, most, just to figure out, well, what is GMO soy besides like a little scary sounding? Um, it's Well, it is. It's genetically modified, and what it's modified to do is withstand, there are different varieties, but most of them are are modified to withstand the application of a pesticide called glyphosate. Okay. So that is the issue. And so it's less the actual genetic modification and more that there are traces of glyphosate in the soy products. And we do have just one study showing that if you drip levels of glyphosate similar to those that can be found in the human body, onto breast cancer cells in a lab, which don't act the same way as breast cancer cells in the body necessarily, but it's still, it's at least an indicator. It does activate estrogen receptors and they grow. The glyphosate does. So the cancer cells grow. But, but, there are no studies showing this in actual humans, and it's certainly not a reason to avoid soy products in general. But my thought here, general recommendation, is go ahead and eat soy, no matter what kind it is, if you can afford organic, or if you are very concerned, or you know, maybe have a personal history of breast cancer, go ahead and buy the organic. Right. But it's certainly not a reason to not eat soy. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. 
Well, uh, wouldn't you say organic versus not? I mean, that's kind of go ahead and, and, and eat the conventional, as it were. Yes, it's conventional. It's better than not eating it. Correct. All. Better to eat the conventional. And then if you're getting organic, it's by definition, theoretically non-GMO. All right. Book that appointment, barnardmedical.org. You can also <laughs> check her out at veggie-quest.com and on the tweeters, veggie underscore quest and the gram at Veggie Quest. Lee at Veggie Quest. There you go. There it is. That's Lee a ticket. Lee at Veggie Quest. We, we talk enough on there. I should just know that off the top of my head. I don't, I don't even know off the that. top of my head, I honestly. I don't know. Either way. <laughs> Lee Crosby, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Chuck. If you like that interview and you want more of it, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Leave a nice comment below. And for the full interview, also head over to Apple Podcast and subscribe to the Exam Room Podcast by the Physicians Committee. New episodes with information and inspiration each and every Wednesday.